Bellevue Stadium, situated in Manchester, was the starting point to the exploitive industry of greyhound racing in Britain. Established since the 24th of July 1926, the stadium has stood there ever since and the races continued at the price of many dogs' lives. But since 2007, animal rights organisations have been holding weekly protests outside the gates of the stadium and today, on the 23rd of February 2013, 87 years since it has been erected, Bellevue faces the angry voice of the protesters. Come on people, what are we ask is to just use a little bit of common sense and wonder what happens to so many of these beautiful dogs each year. 30 greyhounds die, just disappearing. And the industry cannot trace these dogs. In fact, one of the trainers here sent one of their dogs over to Pakistan for their cause and industry, where there's absolutely no welfare laws whatsoever. Another trainer from here was fined 250 pounds for giving his dog steroids and performing enhancement drugs. Another trainer from here sent one of his champion dogs back to a kennel stud room, which was later closed down for supplying cadavers to Liverpool University to be experimented on. Chaplin refused to race. Um, because he refused to race, he was obviously given away. Um, many dogs like Chaplin, rather than giving them away, it's easier for them to just pay £10, take them to a knacker's yard and have them shot, which is totally legal. Well, basically, it's given the dogs a voice. You know, yeah. these dogs have been exploited for gone on 80 years, you know, and it's about time that the public got to see both sides of the story. Yeah. Um, you know, it's a multi billion pound industry that does very well to hide yeah. a lot of the cruelty within it. To be honest, I don't think you're ever going to shut this down in maybe the next decade because there's two types of racing that goes on here there's this type of racing which is basically for the hunters going in the parties you know it's basically on a on a, a night out kind of um, gathering and then you've got what we know as the bags racing which is the bootmakers afternoon ground session which is paid for solely by the betting shops so you might get about um, say 50 people in there max um, but basically the, the money's already gone into it so it doesn't happen to be worrying to them whether they get punters or not and I think if we do educate as many people as possible about the, the, the problems within the industry even if um, you couldn't get the people going in you're still going to get the betting shops you know funding but on, on a different note to that there won't be so many dogs being bred every year you know at the moment you're looking the amount of around 20,000 dogs being bred in both Ireland and this country, you know, so it's, um, that's a lot of dogs, you know, especially for how many are registered and how many retire, you know, you're looking at a shortfall of over 10,000 that could go, go out unaccounted for, you know, some don't even get to the tracks, you know, so it's, it's, it's frightening that, that these are only less than a year old before they're being judged whether they're good enough to be a track dog basically and then their future owner's money.
Well, I'm against all forms of animal exploitation. I actually found out about this through horse racing, which is something else that I'm quite against. Um, it was, it's actually one of the very first demos I've ever been to, um, and I've been here now for probably nearly two years. Um, and it's just something, I mean, everybody has a pet dog. I had dogs when I grew up. There's something that's very close to most people's hearts. Um, and to find out that they're abused in such a horrific way by this industry, it's, it's just unacceptable. Well, this is one of many animal welfare issues that I can campaign on. You know, I campaign against uh, vivisection, factory farming, fur trade. Um, but it's just a, a clear-cut issue. These animals are being exploited. The public who arrive here are being deceived. The management here are trying to pull the wool over the eyes of people coming here. You know, they, they've founded an organisation called the Retired Greyhound Trust, which is really just a public relations exercise. The dogs which are rescued by the the uh, Retired Greyhound Trust, of course, they are the lucky few. They are the minority which get rescued. But they're trying to uh, encourage people to believe that all the dogs, are, are, are being, their welfare considerations have been looked into now and that we, the campaigners at the gate, don't know what they're talking about, whereas nothing could be further from the truth, of course. Obviously they don't care about the dogs, it's business. I'm not saying all trainers are like that. Obviously there's probably the small time greyhound trainers who have got 10, 20 dogs, they can afford to look after them better. The ones that have got say 100 dogs aren't going to care. They'll keep them in terrible conditions, they'll keep them caged 23 hours a day, um, keep them muzzled 23 hours a day. Um, it's just totally unfair. It's wrong, it should be illegal. Each trainer, right, has their own way of looking after the dogs when they go home at night. Um, some trainers who might have, say, 50 to 100 dogs, um, like there's a couple of trainers here, um, they might be able to give the dogs as much um, attention and looking after as trainers who have got five dogs. You know, the small-time trainers who um, basically are the ones who, who these say that they're all like, you know, um, but... A couple of the trainers here were exposed in the Sunday Express for having kennels classed by um, a welfare organisation. It's disgusting, um, basically, you know. And to make the Sunday Express, it was it was it, it was quite shocking. The, the the actual the actual kennels were quite shocking. Um, now <coughs> they were never punished for that for the way they kept them. The GBGB, who regulates everything within the industry, never punished them for that. You know, they never actually sort out to, to make a point of what they were doing. This demonstration is, is almost a um, famous demonstration really nationally because this is the best attended uh, regular weekly animal rights or animal welfare demonstration in, in the UK reputedly. So it, it, and it's a demonstration sort of on our doorstep here, a campaign that we believe we can win. We know we're in for the long term. I've been coming here now for over three years, but I knew that it would be a slow kind of war of attrition, if you, if you know what I mean. But I believe it's a campaign we can win, and we have seen results. People do frequently um, uh, 
on every night, every Saturday night, promise they will make this the last ever visit here. And numbers are noticeably down, yeah. attendances are noticeably down here. So we, we feel we are certainly having an impact. Similar campaigns taking place as we speak at other Greyhound stadiums up and down the country. You know, we're, we're one of uh, many groups which campaign against Greyhound racing in this country. You know, as we give these leaflets out to people as they come here tonight, you know, we're trying to increase awareness of what goes on in the industry. It's rather gruesome reading, of course, but it's, you know, the true story of Greyhound racing is very unpleasant. But the majority of people in the country, you know, are well aware of what goes on. This industry has been exposed time and time again in the media on television and radio on that. Even though these days it is difficult to get animal welfare stories into the press. They're a business product at the end of the day. And once, uh, once their product stops pulling in money, that product's got to go and be replaced by another dog or product. Um, you know, it's a sad fact that these animals are basically you know, seen as just pure money. Yeah. You know, um, but yeah, we speak to many trainers. We speak to uh, we speak to a lot of the public when we're not here. You know, when we're doing um, stalls outside, uh, when we're doing um, leaflet handouts, when we're just basically educating the public in yeah. general. You know, um, we never stop.